Hello and welcome back to another How To Django tutorial. My name's Tom with Master Code Online. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. In today's How To Django tutorial, we're going to take a look at um, class-based list views and function-based list views in our blog application. We're going to we're going to display the, our post as a list. Um, so I want to show you guys the difference between the class and the function-based views. Uh, most importantly, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Back in the day when Django first came out, it was all function-based views. And then uh, some developers started getting smart and building generic function-based views where they didn't have to spend so much time writing a uh, function-based view for each one of them. And then the developers at Django caught on to this and decided, hey, why don't we use classes to inherit our views, all right? Um, so I'm going to give you a little rundown of what I do when I approach a view. Uh, I have three questions I ask myself. The first question being, what kind of data am I going to be displaying? What am I working with uh, with the view? Um, am I going to be displaying a list of blog posts? Or am I going to be displaying um, a uh, blog detail page, all right? Uh, or am I going to be needing to create a a view that spits out um, a JSON file or something like that, okay? So there's a lot of questions to be asking yourself. So that's the first question I always ask myself. Do What am I doing with this data that's going to be spit out here? Um, and I try to go off that. Now, if it's like a list a blog list view or a blog detail view then I'm probably gonna to lead towards a class because there's a generic um, view for that now if I'm writing something really complicated like I'm spitting out some JSON uh, data that users are going to be using then I'm most likely gonna write a function um, also my next question would be to myself um, is there a generic class view for this and Django has several um, generic base classes. They got view, they got template view, redirect view, they also have detail view, list view. Um, if you're editing something, they got form view, create view, update view, delete view. And if you're working with dates, they got ar archive index view, year archive view, month archive view, week archive view, day archive view, and uh, today archive view, and detail archive view. I just ran through the whole list there. Um, so they have generic views for a lot of things that we'll be doing. So if they have a generic view for it, then I'm probably leading towards a class. Now, if they don't have a generic view to, for it, uh, most likely I'm going to lead towards a function. And the last and, and uh, not least, my third question to myself before I write a, a view is, what does my client want with this view? What kind of data or what do they want to see this view do? Now, if you're writing a simple view, like a blog detail is just showing the full blog, um, you can probably go with the class. But if the client wants you pulling data from seven different models and, and stuff like that, then you might want to start thinking about function-based views. Now, most of the time, um, if, <laughs> if I'm not writing a blog, um, which I'm normally not, uh, then I'm going towards the function based view and the reason I do this is a little bit easier to, to read a little bit easier to extend I should say a lot easier to extend because um, when you present a site to the client they're most likely going to come back and say hey we want this we want that we want this we want that and when they do that uh, working with class based views is going to be a little bit more difficult you're going to have to go back and rewrite the code so I always take the function based clip uh, approach in, mo in most cases but there is times I use classes like when I'm working with a blog so in today's tutorial we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the um, generic list view for uh, our blog post and also I'm gonna show you how to write the function view that would be the same approach and you guys can decide what you want to do and we're gonna do the next thing and uh, do the same thing in the next tutorial where we write the detail and that way you guys get an understanding how the class views work and how the um, function based views work so let's get started um, first off we need to go in our blog directory and open our views.py file alright now the first one we're going to write is going to be the class-based view with 
uh, a generic view. So we're going to say from Django.views.generic import up generic list import uh, list view. All right. Oh, that's why I'm getting an error. This is Django. There you go. All right. Cool. So we have to import the um, generic list list view because we're going to create a class, a subclass of list view. All right. So we have to have access to that. Uh, next thing we need to do is have access to our table and our database. So what we need to do is from models import posts. So we're going to say from dot dot models import post like that. All right. Because if you remember back in our models, we created a model called post right there. All right. So we're importing that one. All right. Next thing we want to do is uh, create our class, our subclass of list view. So it's going to be class, and then we're going to say post list view. All right. And then we're going to call list view as, a, as our parameter. And what that is, is creating a subclass of list view. All right. Uh, next thing we need to do inside the class is say, hey, where are we getting this data from? Well, we import it from here, but inside the class, the subclass needs to know where the data is coming from. So we're going to do model is equal to post. All right. So now this class knows, hey, I'm getting the data from the post table. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is create a method. And we're going to use a method called get underscore contacts underscore data. And what this does is gets the data from our table. All right. So to create a method, we do define um, get context data. All right. And it takes uh, require, two required arguments, I should say. It takes self. So self of the object, whatever object we're getting. And then keyword args. All right. Um, and then down here, we're going to go ahead and create a variable and we're going to call that variable context. And then we're going to get, then we're going to say super, whoop, super. So we're getting the super class and we're going to call it post list view dots, oh, not dot comma self. And then we're going to get, get context data and we're going to pass in keyword arcs all right so what this is doing is going up to the post list view all right and it's going to get the data the data is right here all right it's telling it that's where it's telling to go get it from the database from the table post all right and we're going to get a list of objects and that list of objects are our blog posts so we need to return it so we have access to it so return context all right, so that's our class base view in Django. Um, now let's take a look at the function base view. Um, yeah. All right, sorry. Uh, so let's take a look at the function base view that would create a list of blog posts for us. So what we're going to do is define, well, actually, um, make sure you have from Django dot shortcuts import render in there because that's what we're going to use is the render function to render our post. So we're going to say uh, define post underscore list. And this takes one parameter and that's request. And request is what's coming from your URLs.py file, which it gets its data from whatever page the user visited on your uh, website or web app. <clears throat> All right, cool. So now we need to query the database so what i'm going to do is call our variable objects list and the reason i'm doing i would actually call this post in real life p-o-s-t-s -S. but since i don't want to write two views um down the line or two templates i should say down the line uh we're going to use objects list and you'll see why in a couple tutorials i did this and i'll try to remember to tell you that's why i did it um so let's go ahead and do post dot objects dot all 
All right, and this is going to get all the objects or all the data in the post table. Okay. One thing I forgot to show you guys, or one thing I forgot to do, is create a template. So we're going to say template is equal to, and we haven't created this yet, but in templates, in our templates directory, we're going to have another directory called blog. So we're going to put in blog, and then we're going to have uh, forward slash, and then we're going to have our actual template, which is going to be uh, post underscore list dot HTML. All right, we didn't create that yet. We'll do that in couple tutorials here and we got our objects list where we're getting to all the posts and next thing we need to do is create our context so context is equal to and it's a dictionary first one's a string we're gonna say objects list and then colon then objects list and this is how we display our or this is how we get our data in the template you know, like I said, we'll be working with templates shortly. And then we need to return this data. So we're going to say return render. Here's that function we imported up here. And what we're going to do is uh, this takes two required arg arguments. I don't remember off the top of my head. So it takes request. Ooh, actually, I think it takes three. Request, template, no, two. It takes request and template. And then context we'll put in context there all right so when we render the page it's taking the request which is coming from the urls.py file uh, it's going to return the template uh, so it's getting the template here and it's going to return the context so that's our that is our um, our function base view so whatever one you feel more comfortable using you can use there's no right or wrong answer to this but like I said before, um, kind of restrict it with class-based views. You can write your own class-based views, but you're kind of uh, restricted with them. And function-based views, they're very easy to read and very easy to extend. So it's up to you and what you're doing with them, how you program your views. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next tutorial where we take a look at the detail view.